This is part four in our series on how to build a copper still where we will be shaping the boiler. We're going to start by bending the teeth up on the boiler. Um, I should mention that these types of stills, small copper distillers, are often sometimes called moonshine stills. They can be used though to distill all kinds of products uh, such as distilled water, essential oils, fuel alcohol, and distilled spirits, of course, with the proper permits on the latter two. So we will bend the tabs up with the pliers by very meticulously grabbing um, each tab and just bending it upwards so it sits at a final resting place of about 90 degrees to the boiler. You want to grab the tab right where it meets the boiler and just bend it up. If you have a pair of sheet metal pliers, they'll make this job go a lot faster. I have some, but I figured most folks won't, so I just went ahead and did this with the regular pair of pliers. Like I said, it takes a bit longer, but you get the job done just the same. So once you're finished bending the tabs with the pliers, what I like to do is take a body mace and a ball peen hammer and I like to place the body mace. This could be a chunk of metal or just something with a flat, solid edge and a, um, a hard 90 degree bend on the bottom. And I like to place that up against the bottom of the tabs and I just run down all of the tabs and tap the bottom against the mace just to make sure that you have a really crisp, clean, flat edge all the way across that boiler bottom. This will ensure that the bottom of the still is flat once it's finished and it will also ensure that the boiler bottom fits down nice and flush with those tabs once you drop it in, which will make soldering a lot easier. Okay, for this next step, I'm going to go ahead and put some gloves on. I'm not going to be soldering anything just yet, but the edges of these parts can be sharp and uh, I'm just making sure to protect my hands uh, so I don't end up cutting myself. So what I'm doing here actually is I'm going to roll the boiler wall, the still boiler wall over. So we're starting with the flat piece here. We're going to end up with the cylinder. Um, you don't want to get too aggressive with this uh, because... If you end up rolling real hard and you crease the copper, you're not going to be able to get that crease out. You'll still be able to build the still and it will still function. But you'll just notice that crease once it's finished. So you, you want to apply firm but even pressure across um, a pretty large chunk of the material if you can. Don't just like fold it over as, as if it's a piece of paper. You uh, So you need to balance that, though, with the fact that the more you work this copper, the stiffer it will get um, until you heat it up again. So you kind of want to split the difference there between trying your best not to apply uh, too much pressure, but then don't, you know, don't be too, don't go too light on the copper as well. So um, I'm showing you this part here this section of the build in real time so you get a sense for exactly how much pressure I'm putting on the copper while I'm rolling it and how much time it's taking so I'll just continue to roll and re-roll and I like the, I like to roll the copper over on itself um, and keep in mind it does not need to be a perfect cylinder at this point. In fact, it, it's almost a little bit easier if the edges of the copper were that, that get riveted together um, are not quite bent, um, not quite rolled as much as they should be. And you'll, don't worry about that, you'll be able to roll it out later. So once you get it rolled, uh, to the point that it's a reasonable shaped, reasonably shaped cylinder. What I like to do is just take a little pair of locking pliers. 
you line the rivet holes up, you lock one end of the still boiler wall together, grab a hammer, again grab your, your body mace, um, or a little chunk of metal or something, you pop a rivet down in, I'm going to join the boiler at the second rivet hole up from the bottom where we bended, where, where we bent the tabs. I'll explain how to do that one last. You need to set it on something, uh, uh, an anvil. You could use that little mace. Just, uh, uh the, a sledgehammer, just another piece of metal. You sit the boiler down onto your hard surface, the surface you're going to hammer against, and you just tap that rivet so it expands ever so slightly, and mushrooms into place. I'm going to move on to the next rivet hole here. Um, tap it a few times. The key with installing these rivets is actually not to hit them too many times. If you really just like hammer down on them and pound them absolutely flat, it tends to expand the copper at the seam there where you'll be soldering and then sort of deforms the copper and, and the boiler wall doesn't look as straight at that point. So... My advice is to just hammer the rivets, tap the rivets enough times, hard enough and enough times to get them to the point that they are secure and no longer moving. Once you hit that point, stop hammering. Now to do with this last rivet here, I have to unbend some of the tabs. I suppose I could have just not bent these um, to begin with, but um, I forgot, no big deal. This is just gonna make it easier to hammer that rivet in because that rivet hole is so close to the bottom there. And of course I'll bend that tab back before soldering the bottom in. All right, make sure to check out part five of our series on how to build a copper still where we will begin soldering.